What is gluten? Who should avoid it? If you keep eating it, will you end up with celiac disease? Should we avoid wheat, oats, and barley since they have gluten? Are all other whole grains like quinoa, millet, amaranth, teff, buckwheat, and wild rice safe for a celiac patient? Yeah, uh, gluten is a protein. It's found in wheat. It's also found in barley and rye. And wheat and barley and rye are healthy foods. And they're great and delicious. And, and you really can't say anything bad about them. But in the same way as you can be allergic to a strawberry, or you can be allergic to oranges or whatever, you can have a reaction to gluten. Uh, less than 1% of people has the disease called celiac disease, which is where you're reacting to the, the protein, the gluten in wheat or barley or rye. And if you've got that, your intestine really gets torn up and you have to avoid gluten containing grains. The good news is it's really those three uh, that I mentioned. Oats don't have gluten, corn does not have gluten, um, unless they're in a cereal box factory where they're contaminated by other grains. So there are companies like Bob's Red Mill that make a point of saying, our oats definitely don't have any gluten contaminating and so you can trust ours. Um, now, so I said about less than 1% of people have celiac disease. A larger number, maybe roughly one in 10, will just say, if they avoid gluten, they feel better. And by feel better, they, they mean their digestion is better um, or their mentation is better. Uh, they just feel better. And they don't have to avoid gluten, but they can and they do well. The other 90% of people will try a gluten-free diet because they heard about it on TV. And they discovered it was a pain in the neck, really difficult and didn't help them at all. And when they went back to eating gluten-containing grains, they were perfectly fine with it. So that's really where they are. A very, very few people need to avoid gluten, but there are, you know, as I said, people with celiac disease who absolutely must. Um, and then if you wish to avoid gluten, you can. Um, and some of the gluten-free products that have come out, like a, a pizza that has a, a, a rice crust, for example, because rice doesn't have gluten. You know, it's a cool variant on a pizza. Give it a try, see if you like it. Should people take a probiotic to help their gut microbiome? No, it's not necessary. Um, it's fashionable. Industry promotes it. Uh, the research on efficacy has really shown that they don't help. Um, even for a person who has had uh, an antibiotic treatment that knocked out their gut bacteria, um, it will repopulate on its own. You don't need, you don't need probiotics. Um, what you do need is a healthy diet for bacteria to to flourish in. Um, if you're not eating healthy, high fiber vegetables and fruits and whole grains and beans, unhealthy bacteria are going to flourish in your gut. Um, so a healthy diet is what allows good, healthy gut bacteria to, to grow. How do we solve America's healthcare crisis? Um, first of all, we have to want to. And it's been a little surprising to me that insurance companies who you would think would do really well if nobody ever got sick, if nobody ever charged anything to their insurance, they would be making a whole lot of money. But I thought that insurance companies don't particularly care if people are healthy or not, because if they're unhealthy and they're using lots of medical care, the insurance companies just raise their premiums to, to um, compensate for it. So they make the same amount of money, whether you're healthy or, or not, uh, whether you're sick or not. Um, and they're making plenty of money. Um, most physicians, I am sorry to say, while they want their patients to be healthy, they're not doing what is really the fundamental thing that brings health and keeps the patient out of your office. And that's to make sure that their diet and lifestyle are conducive to health. Um, doctors to this day are not very well trained in nutrition. They bring their prejudices with them to medical school and they carry them with them uh, in practice. They don't have a dietitian who works there to counsel patients. And if they do, the, the dietitian probably has the same prejudice as the doctor does. And so we're really not getting where we need to go. Um, at the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, we have been working to change all of these things. And we have uh, found that through our annual conferences and our continuing medical education programs, that there is a new generation of doctors um, that has embraced healthy diets in a big way. And they're using it in practice and they're encouraging their hospitals to throw out the bacon and to serve healthy foods. And when we got started back 35 years ago, 
Um, there weren't very many doctors like that, but today there are thousands and thousands and thousands. And, and um, at our medical center, Barnard Medical Center, we um, have been able to also take advantage of telemedicine. So we're reaching people, not just in Washington DC where we are, but in New York and in Florida and California and in Texas. And we have found that um, not only uh, is the medical profession starting to turn a good corner, but um, the public is extremely eager to become partners in their healthcare. And that means learning, how can I eat healthy, healthfully? Can I maybe even get off some medications instead of adding medications? And that's, that's been very exciting too.